let's go for a little tour of Hogwarts here. It's been a while since I've done a video, and my Prisoner of Azkaban model of Hogwarts is still not finished, but I thought it'd be nice to, to take a look at how it's, how it's coming along so far. Uh, so if you're a first-year student, you're going to come in through the boathouse, which is right down here at the bottom. I've never seen it real up close in the movies, except for a redesigned version in Deathly Hallows, so this is not that version. This one's a little smaller. Uh, but you can see it sitting here on the water, and then you got a bunch of stairs. I forget how many hundred plus stairs, but a bunch of stairs that go all the way up. And so then you got a long walk all the way up the mini stairs, looking up at the beautiful castle looming above. It's probably nighttime, not daytime like this, but that's okay. You keep going up more and more stairs, eventually you get to this little, little lookout point right here. You can take a little look back on the, uh, on the boathouse realize how much further you still have to go. Um, anyway, walk all the way up to the top here. And uh, over here, got this little building called the Pepper Pot. And up here, this is this big old honking building structure, uh, usually referred to as the Chamber of Reception, uh, which the interior was shot at, uh, at Oxford. I don't have the interior actually built in here. Um, but this is what the exterior looks like in the miniature. It's also attached to the Great Hall over here. Uh, the Great Hall is pretty unchanged throughout the films. It went through some slight modifications, but, uh, but the basic idea is, is always the same. I've got a very rudimentary interior inside here. You can sort of see the hammer beam roof has some, some basic details, and really just the idea here is to have enough detail so that when I'm viewing it from the outside, at night especially, and looking in through the windows and it's all lit up inside, make sure that I can uh, have something that looks at least somewhat decent. So anyway, so here's the chamber of reception. And as we continue past here, there's some walkways that I have not yet built right here. Uh, also, if you haven't noticed, I don't have any terrain here, so you're going to see an awful lot of, uh, of spots that just seem to drop straight off into the, the lake below. Uh, this wall right here of the Chamber of Reception uh, is one of the few walls that I can find uh, basically no photos of. The Chamber of Reception doesn't exist anymore in the, the current version of the, the miniature because it was replaced in Goblet of Fire by uh, a big entrance courtyard right here, the Viaduct Courtyard. Uh, so yeah, impossible to get reference photos of it nowadays in person, and I've never found a good good shot of it over here, but there's probably some windows there. Anyway, you got some uh, walkways here that I haven't built yet. You got the viaduct, which is this beautiful structure with a double bridge, sort of double decker bridge sort of look. Um, we never actually go through here in the films, but uh, but yeah, this is all all detailed in there. Uh, by the way, of course, most of my textures are turned off, so uh, that's why you're seeing everything so gray. Uh, the different shades of gray reflect slightly different textures that I've used for different areas. But if I tried to load up all the textures and navigate in real time like this, it would not work very well. Anyway, here's the viaduct entrance. You can see it's got the house uh, crests as well as the main Hogwarts crest over the doors. Pretty cool. These are based off of doors at Oxford, but scaled way the heck up. The uh, viaduct entrance leads into this whole wing of the castle that's based off of Durham Cathedral. So we've seen in some previous videos uh, building these areas here, including the central tower, which was redesigned, as were the bell towers in Prisoner of Azkaban. So since we're looking at the Prisoner of Azkaban version right now, this is the first version that has those shapes there, instead of the, the shorter, mo more uh, conical original versions. Down here we've got the greenhouses, you've seen me build the dragons that sit on top of here, but I've got them hidden right now to make it a little bit easier to navigate through without having performance issues. Uh, over here I've also got the, uh, the domed conservatory, which has some dragons along the sides of it as well. Those are also hidden. Uh, and we've even got the interior here because the folks over at the Warner Brothers Studio Tour were so kind as to provide some some blueprints in their studio tour uh, that fans then took photos of and shows what the interior looks like, including the palm trees. So uh, that's all in here. We've got lots of walkways between the greenhouses. This is the one where uh, the actual herbology lesson in Chamber of Secrets happens. 
and uh, you can see the inside I've detailed really, really beautifully. No, not really. Uh, the inside is just detailed enough to hopefully look like something right from the outside when it's actually rendered. Over here we get into the areas of the castle that are based off of Anik Castle. It's spelled A-L-N-W-I-C-K, Anik Castle, in England. And uh, this entrance is pretty much taken exactly from the real thing because they shot some actual scenes on location there. But then as you get around here, you get to some of the areas of the, the training grounds, walls, and these were an original design based off of some of the, the basic design language of Anik. And you can see there's some areas that have crumbled away here. Recent posts on my blog showing how I accomplished that. There's also this structure here, which you can explore in some of the video games, and it's got some, some stairs inside and whatnot. I haven't put that in there. It doesn't seem to be part of the miniature, and uh, I, yeah, I haven't bothered with that. By the way, you can see anywhere we come across these uh, these sconces along the walls, these, these flambeaux, the, the flame looks black. It doesn't actually look black when we render it, but that's what you're seeing on top there is, <laughs> is the, the flame shape. This right here will be the training grounds. These were mostly covered up starting in Prisoner of Azkaban, but as you'll see in my recent uh, blog posts and upcoming blog posts, all these walls uh, were created to match up roughly with stuff at Anik Castle and were uh, kept for the first two films, and then a big hill just swallowed them right up, went right over on top of it. So I'm building all of it right now, even though this whole side of it will be eventually covered up in earth in the Prisoner of Azkaban version. Uh, this side over here still remains visible. This is the Training Grounds Tower, which is based on the bottom, at uh, based on structures at Anik Castle, the, the main keep itself, but it's been kind of zhuzhed around and, and adjusted, and uh, then vertically it's been extended quite a bit so it's a much taller structure i've still got a lot of details i need to add on this side as you can see there's a lot of just blank walls and windows that are just hollow depressions don't have any sort of uh, detailing or anything this side however is is much more complete you can see there's even a little little spot up here where you can there's a little door and you can pop out here and stand up Ooh, let me see if i can get in there it's hard to move the camera slowly with this thing i'm using a uh, a 3D connection device, a 3D mouse that can be used to navigate with six degrees of freedom. Pretty cool. Highly recommend it if you're into 3D stuff. But uh, yeah, there's that view down looking at the, the training grounds, or what will be the training grounds eventually. This, by the way, is where the Whomping Willow is in Chamber of Secrets. Of course, after that it got moved way the heck over here somewhere, but we're not going to worry about that just yet. Uh, so yeah, Training Grounds Tower right there leads back around to this area, which is based directly off of the courtyard and cloisters at Durham Cathedral. So if you look uh, through these areas, you can see it looks very much like the real thing, at least until you pan up far enough to, uh, to see the, the tops of the towers, which were of course changed. But all this down here is set to, to match pretty closely to the real thing. I still made some modifications, and there's some, some set dressings that were, were added by the filmmakers, uh, such as those benches, if I remember correctly, but it's pretty similar. Up here we've got the Dark Tower, so-called, which is not from Durham Cathedral. This was added in Prisoner of Azkaban and lasted until the uh, Astronomy Tower took its place in, uh, whatchamacallit, in, in Half-Blood Prince. And, oh, I'm seeing a little, little error there. Some of my... Uh, some of my my vulture uh, gargoyles are not quite sticking to the walls. I'll have to <laughs> fix that after this video. So yeah, that's the Dark Tower. This is where Sirius Black is held prisoner right in here. That's his cell. And uh, so then, then they take off on Buckbeak and they fly all the way back down over here, back around the Grand Staircase Tower, with the Headmaster's Tower, Dumbledore's office sitting right up there. Anyway, they fly back down around the other side of the uh, of the Great Hall and, and over there, but we're not there yet. Let me go back to the Dark Tower. Dark Tower, here you can see, yeah, it's those ones on the on the sides. They're not quite matching up. I wonder how I did that. I'll have to fix that. But uh, yeah, Dark Tower existed from Prisoner of Azkaban um, up through, but not past Order of the Phoenix. 
this also, uh, this structure right here, often referred to as the Defense Against the Dark Arts Tower, because in the first film, you can see that... Uh, uh, no, that's not why it's called the Defense Against the Dark Arts Tower. Why do we call it the Defense Against the Dark Arts Tower? Oh, that's right. In Goblet of Fire, uh, it, there's a there's a, a pullback establishing shot that seems to suggest that <laughs> that it's in there. But anyway, this structure moved around a little bit in the first few films, but it, it stuck around all the way until we got to uh, uh, Half-Blood Prince, at which point it was kind of rotated 180 degrees and moved over here to where the Dark Tower is and redesigned up on top, and it became the Astronomy Tower, which Dumbledore, of course, tragically falls from into a redesigned version of the courtyard below. But I haven't built any of that yet. Uh, over here we've got the Stone Bridge, which connects the viaduct entrance over to this roughly square-ish set of structures that contains the quad in the middle. I haven't built the quad at all, as you can see, because it's really hard to find good reference of the quad in the early films. Uh, there's, there's a lot that I still don't know about that. We do, of course, have the hospital wing up here, though. This is the hospital wing as it was designed for Prisoner of Azkaban, and it stuck around for all the way through to Fantastic Beasts. Uh, and it, of course, connects up to the clock tower building here. This is the, the area that Ron, or, uh, Harry and Hermione run through all the way. I, I don't have details, but I'll show you inside anyway. <laughs> they run through from the hospital wing down here toward the clock tower. And then, again, missing lots of detail in here that I'll probably never add because I'm focused mainly on the exteriors. But we go all the way through here and pass through the clock and down below. Ooh, we've got, sorry, we've got the uh, the clock tower courtyard, which was also created for Prisoner of Azkaban. So you can see how that clock overlooks the clock tower, or uh, overlooks the, the courtyard. I've got, by the way, the eagle uh, statues turned off here, as well as some of my, uh, or, or all of my grass and like leaves on the trees and stuff. Those really slow things down when I'm trying to navigate through here. Uh, this area was not accomplished with, uh, on location, like a lot of the stuff with, with Oxford and Durham Cathedral and Annick Castle and Lecoq Abbey and a, a few other places, uh, where those were all location shoots, but this was just done on a set, and it was mimicked in a couple of different miniatures, this main 124th scale miniature, as well as uh, a, at least one larger miniature. I, I forget offhand what the scale for that one was. But uh, that was used in the filming uh, of some of the, the visual effects shots. In here you can see the pendulum of the clock. It's a really, really long pendulum. Uh, so the way it swings in the movie is not necessarily completely realistic, but it's effective for the storytelling. I've also got a very rudimentary interior here, including this big old window in the back, but not much else. In the movie, in the sets, we can see that there's stairs in here, but I haven't built those since, again, I'm mainly focused on the exteriors. Back to the exterior, you can see if we pass through the cloister here very carefully, whoo, made it, we can get to the wooden bridge. This was also added for Prisoner of Azkaban, this very wonky, all over the place, sort of twisted old bridge that sits across a ravine. Haven't built the ravine yet, but you can see the, the basic uh, framework underneath it. Then it comes all the way out to this little gatehouse over here, which was built on location in Scotland. Uh, and then down here you've got the stone circle, which leads down to Hagrid's hut somewhere over here. None of that has been built yet, of course. And that's really the state of the model as it currently stands. Uh, there is still a lot more for me to do. I need to, of course, add the terrain all over the place. I need to add this walkway here as well as the quad inside. I need to add the suspension bridge over here. I need to finish up the detailing on, and even this whole wall on the training grounds tower. Uh, I need to finish up these walls and the barbican and gatehouse and everything. Uh, around the training grounds, I need to... what else do I need to do? There's a, a wall over here that needs to be completed. Uh, that, I think, is just about it for this version of 
of the castle, but of course I'm also working on other versions, and the hope being that eventually I will have all, uh, I guess, eight-ish different versions of the castle, uh, one for each of the seven books, as well as, uh, well, yeah, I guess nine versions, because then Fantastic Beasts is ever so slightly from Death, slightly different from Deathly Hallows Part Two, and then uh, the ninth one would of course be the version from the Wizarding World of Harry Potter at Universal Studios, which was built in real life at a smaller scale with forced perspective, but uh, certainly a much bigger scale than the miniature that I am attempting to replicate here. So anyway, that'll all come in in weeks and months and probably years to come. Hopefully I finish this whole thing, but in the meantime I wanted to give you a little taste of how the project is looking right now. Hope you have enjoyed this look at my model of Hogwarts Prisoner of Azkaban created in Blender. Feel free to go visit my blog hogwarts4d.home.blog for all the latest updates. I update that blog much more often than this YouTube channel, although the goal in the end is to have lots of cool videos about how all the different changes occurred uh, between the different versions of the castle. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll hope to have more content for you soon. So long.